Happy New Year's, everyone. ND Sean 45 coming at you. I made the promise to you guys that I was going to finish answering all of your questions from the Q&A series. Well, I'm here to do just that, and I'm looking to knock out about three more questions here in this video. So it might be a little on the long side, like 10 or 11 minutes, but I'm sure most of you probably won't mind that too much. Now, before I get to answering those questions, there's a few things that I want to address. To those of you who are my regular and loyal viewers, you obviously saw in the Cotton Bowl post-game video that I disabled all the comments. Now, I don't know how some of you feel about that. Maybe some of you think I'm a bitch for doing that or a coward or whatever. But I'm not sorry that I did it. And if you feel that way about me, then so be it. But to put it simple, I'm not going to listen to the same nonsense and bullshit and the despicable comments from the haters on here. Um, unfortunately, a couple were able to squeak through before I disabled the comments, and they were just disgusting. Uh, obviously, we know the haters have no class, and they're despicable people, and well, what more do I really need to say? So that's why I did it. I'm just not going to listen to their nonsense. I'm not going to hear it. I'm not going to put up with it. Um, and also, guys, I, I got to tell you something. After the Cotton Bowl on Saturday, it really... And I shouldn't be surprised at this, but it just, it really amazes me, like, when the Irish lose a game like this, you really see the ugliness in our society come out. And I'm not talking about just the haters. I mean, yeah, the haters are, are despicable. They say some of the most stupid and asinine things I've ever heard. But the real problem, well, I, I wouldn't say this is the real problem, but what's just as bad as the haters is there's Notre Dame fans that are saying the same things that the haters are. I mean, you know, I've looked at uh, various pages across social media, and some of the things that are being said by so-called Notre Dame fans just as asinine as th the things that the haters say. I mean, they say the same damn things. Oh, fire Brian Kelly. Notre Dame should join a conference. Notre Dame had no business being in the Cotton Bowl. That, or, or the playoffs, I should say. Just stupid. Look, I was pissed off when I did the, when I did the post game, and a lot of the things I do stand by. But this season was still successful for the Irish, considering the fact that we were projected by most people to win only on average nine games, and we go uh, undefeated and make it to the college football playoff just two years removed from going four and eight. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty successful. Do I still think we need to, you know, narrow the talent gap? Yes. Do I still think that we need to, that uh, our coaching staff needs to come in with a better game plan? Yes. It's okay to be pissed off, but to say such stupid, asinine things like that about your own team. <laughs> and as far as the haters go, I mean, they're going to be around. You can't stop them. But it just really amazes me that there's people out there that hate a football team that damn much that they just can't see the good things that this team did, that they can't give us the slightest bit of respect for what th this team did accomplish. I mean, really, when you look at the Cotton Bowl, you take away six minutes in the second quarter, it's a whole new ball game. But obviously you can't, uh, you can't convince the haters of that because the haters have to be rational people first. Um, but good, good luck with that ever happening. But it, it just, it's really sickening that there's hate from both sides when the Irish lose, lose a game like this. I mean, I'm not saying it's not okay to be pissed off. Of course it's okay to be pissed off. But to just, you know, say such drastic... And this I'm talking about the fans. To say such drastic things and basically call the season a failure and that it meant nothing is just stupid. I mean, yeah, you feel like crap all you want. It sucks that, you're, that you know, the Irish lost. But to just completely do a 360 on your own team and call for heads and the same stupid crap, like the conferences and all that, just either you're a fan or you're not. And if you're going to just play this half ass crap, then turn in your fan card right now and go cheer for somebody else. So I'm sorry, guys. I know four minutes uh, addressing this crap, but I just felt it was stuff that, that had to be said. So let's get to the questions. Now, the first question in this video comes from a user who calls himself SuperfanDK. And his question is this. Sean, since your trip to Ireland in 2012, have you watched any, any Gaelic football since then? Uh, a little bit. Not much. I don't follow it religiously like I do, you know, football or baseball or anything, any, any sports here. But I have watched some of it. Uh, I watched the All-Ireland Final a few years ago when uh, 
um, I think it was Dublin, no, Dublin won it. I, I think they played County Kerry. I could be wrong, but Dublin won it on a, on a free kick at the end. And that's the last time I watched it. Now, the second question comes from a, a user who calls, him, calls himself Craig uh, Sebring. Is that, I, I hope I said that correctly. Craig Sebring, I think, is what the user, the, sc- the user's screen name was. And his question was this. Sean, why is it that the guys on ESPN like Kirk Herbstreet and uh, I think he said Jim Mora or who else? He, but he wants to know why the guys on ESPN hate Notre Dame so much. Well, Craig, it's very simple. This doesn't just apply to the guys on ESPN. It, it applies to all the uh, average fans who are just who are just Notre Dame haters. They hate us because we're not in a conference. I mean, they have they have such a hard on for teams being in a conference. They hate the fact that we're that we're independent. I mean, honestly, the conference the us to join a conference crap. I am so sick of it. I said this in a past video. All the haters should be thankful that we're not in a conference because us not being in a conference it pretty much forces us to go undefeated to make the playoffs i mean one let's face it one loss and we're out of the playoff line i mean unless uh, crazy things happen or the playoffs expand so why they're bitching about us to join a conference i it just doesn't make any sense to me but they just hate uh that you know we talk about you know, that us Irish fans talk about uh, Notre Dame football history so much in the days of Newt Rockney and the Four Horsemen and all that. They think that we live in the past, which we don't live in the past, but why would you not want to be proud of your history? That's what I don't get. So the hate, they hate that. Um, they think that we're arrogant, that we're cocky, that this and that. They hate the fact that we have a contract with NBC. I mean, they really... Mike Gollick covered this uh, back in 2012 when he went on his rant after Rick, uh, Rick Riley wrote that article about us, about how we should just say no to NBC and the, at the time, the BCS. But they, they seem to get that we, they see, the haters seem to think that we get all this preferential treatment, but when you really, you know, actually use your mind and, you know, get rational about it, there's really no special treatment. I mean, it's not like, like Mike Gollick said years ago. NBC and the BCS, and I don't know if we're involved with the college football, not 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 the selection committee, but the college football playoff group. I don't know if uh, Jack Swarbrick's involved with that or not, but it's not like we're we're forcing a gun to people's heads and say, "Give us this right now." No, they're offering it to us, and it would be a stupid business decision to say no to it. I mean. You know, NBC, one of the biggest networks in the country, wants to pay you money to broadcast your home games. You'd say no to that. Why? So they just, they just, they hate us for things like that. It, it's basically just, um, they hate us for not being in a conference and being in, an independent. They hate us for have us having our own uh, TV deal. They hate us because uh, we keep talking about our past. They keep, they think we live there. That they, th- they think that we're uh, cocky and arrogant fans. But with that part, I say, it's not just us. Every fan base in the country has arrogant and cocky fans that are so full of themselves. It's not just Notre Dame. Um, But I guess, uh, you know, when you're on national TV every week, you know, people are going to only focus on you and not everybody else. So it's it's okay if other fans or teams of uh, other teams as fans have cockiness and arrogant fans and whatnot. But for some reason, oh, it's only us who have the arrogant and cocky fans. Um, so it's, it's just things like that. Uh, they just, uh, like I said before, they're all hell-bent on playing in a conference and playing that cha- conference championship game, which we don't have to do. Um, so it, it's just things like that. I mean, they, they, they the, all the haters seem to think that we're delusional and that we don't know what's going on with our football team. I mean, I think in my in my post game, I said it the best. I mean, I admitted to a lot of what people are thinking. We do need to narrow that talent gap. We need to bring in more playmakers to match up with the top teams right now. Um, I mean, the funny thing is, when you, also with uh, with Brian Kelly, there are sub fi, sub five hundred coaches out there right now that are making more money than Brian Kelly is. That's a fact. I mean, there's not too many coaches that are, and I'm not trying to sound arrogant here, but how many coaches really are better than Brian Kelly? Not many. Obviously, Nick Saban comes to mind, Dabo Sweeney. 
I mean, I'm sure there's a few others in there. I mean, Scott Scott Frost, yeah, he did a good job down at Central Florida, but kind of a rough start to Nebraska, but time will tell with him. But there's really not too many. So it's, it's just things like that. I mean, when when you're the the, indep- the only independent, well, not the only, but the main independent team in the country that, has, that everybody knows about their history, just we're the ones that everyone's gunning for. You know, it's just, it's it's just like you know being the the top athlete in, in high school. You know, you fail, everybody's going to look at you, everybody's going to point the finger, and you're you're just being constantly watched all the time. And honestly, if you want my opinion, I think some of these some of these uh, fans and analysts on TV that hate us so much, they're just jealous because I think a lot of them wish they could be independent and get the stuff that Notre Dame's getting. But honestly, I don't see why. I mean, Texas has their own network, for example. So I don't see why that these other teams couldn't get it too. I mean, the conferences themselves have their own networks, but I, I get it, individual teams. So it's just a mixture of all that stuff right there. Um, but anyway, I, I think that I think that's a good answer to your question. There's probably a bunch more things that I'm leaving out, um, but that's the gist of it. And the third question for this video is this, and holy crap, I've gone over 11 minutes. So I hope you guys have a... Uh, haven't turned off the video yet. <laughs> but this third question comes from another longtime viewer of mine, Dan1984. And he has this question for me. Sean, in the nine or ten years that you've been doing YouTube, what is uh what are the things that you've liked the most about doing these YouTube videos? Oh. Dan, the number the number one answer to that is all the awesome people that I've met. Uh, even you and I, we we don't know each other personally, but um you know, you've been awesome to get to know. Um, I mean, granted, we, we disagree on a lot of things politically and socially, but you're a cool dude. Um, but I just look, I mean, all the pe- all the people that I've met, you know, my good buddy Shamrock Jerry, Magnum, Big Vol Daddy. Um, I'm not going to give out names, but my good buddy up in up in Chicago that's, that hosted me a couple of times for uh, a few games. Um, uh, my buddy, you guys know him as a, Shake Down the Thunder Productions. I mean, all the awesome people that I've met on here, all because I happened to stumble on here one day and and whatnot. And I mean, the crazy part is, when I started here on YouTube, I started under the screen name Big Sean Power 10. And I quit YouTube as fast as I started it. And you guys that have been watching me since day one, you know why, because of the whole Michigan State message board fiasco. Um, and if anybody wants to know that story, I'll tell you in the comments. Um, but had I, it's, it's crazy when I think about that. Had I quit YouTube because of that, never would have known Shamrock Jerry, never would have did with him what we did in South Bend with raising the Irish tricolor outside the stadium, never would have gone to Ireland and had a good time with him there. Um, my buddy up in Chicago, I never would have met him. I, my buddy Shake Down the Thunder Productions, uh, who's now joined up with uh, the Dose Leprechauns podcast, he asked me to be a groomsman in his wedding. And the weekend of his wedding is the first time we ever met in person. I mean, we, we've talked on the phone, but that was the first time I met him in person was for his wedding in which he invited me to be a groomsman. I mean, how awesome is that? I mean that that is one of the that's one of the coolest things that you know that to make to make friends like that to have people think so much of you that they're willing to pretty much invite a stranger to be in their wedding. I mean that's that's pretty awesome. And you know, I mean I've talked to a lot of you guys on the phone, a lot of you I haven't met in person yet, but I'm that's I'm looking to change that. I mean, I know uh uh, I'm looking. I'm looking to make the trip down to Athens next year for the Notre Dame Georgia game. Hopefully, meet up with Magnum. Uh, but of course, all this has to be arranged yet. That uh, seems like a you know light years away yet. But it's just all the people that I've met through doing YouTube. So putting up with the haters and the trolls and the Michigan State goons, it's all it's been worth it. To meet all the good people that I have, it's been worth it. So that's number one. Number two would definitely be. Being able to have my own platform here and do in doing these videos, whether it's Notre Dame football, politics, social issues, whatever, um, getting a chance to say what I have to say, 
knowing that a lot of the things that I say are not the things that most people want to hear. Um, but and I'm not trying to make this all political or anything, but I think that I say a lot of things that, you know, most people in their neck of the woods, they don't, I share an opinion that most people, other people don't hear in their neck of the woods. So being able to get on here and make a video and say things that I have to say, that would be coming in at a strong number two. Um, cause I mean, yeah, it's easy, it's easy to just leave a comment in the comment section or on a, a forum somewhere, but to actually get on here and get on video and say what you have to say, I think that's more personable. Uh, so that's something that I like about doing these videos too. And I've also, I mean, I've been able to reach a lot of people too and share these, these different opinions that I have with them and, you know, maybe give them an idea that what I'm saying is misconstrued and taken out of context. Um, but that's not always the case. So, but yeah, I, I'd say it's definitely all the new, fr all the friends that I've made, friends that are legitimately friends and part of my life that I do talk to regularly. Um, oh, and Hoss, I forgot about you too. I mean, we, we know each other personally as well. Um, so just things like that. Um, you know, pe people that, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of friends that I've met on here have really been a, a difference in my life. They've touched my life a lot and I, you know, I, th I think that I've touched their lives as well. I mean, one, you know, the people like those of you who have met me in person that you've gotten, you've gotten the chance to know me, you know, that I'm much, a much more of a person than just what you see here on, on YouTube, that there's a lot more to me than just these videos. So I think that's a good place to, to cut that answer off. I mean, holy crap, I'm almost at 17 minutes. I don't think you guys will mind that too much. I hope you've enjoyed it to this point. Um, so there you go, guys. It's three more questions answered. A few more yet to go. Um, I'll try to have those done possibly over the weekend sometime. So on that note, everyone, this is Andy Sean 45 signing off. God bless. Win or lose, no matter what, go Irish.